and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus the Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made and he has commanded us to rejoice and be glad. And we have the victory. Victory is our lifestyle. We welcome you into the sacred place that we presently call sanctuary where God is exalted, the devil is defeated, and we have the victory. This is the day that the Lord hath made and he has commanded us to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you so much for tuning in with us tonight in our Wednesday night recharge. And we do pray, we pray even now that something will be said to empower you, to enlighten you, and to encourage you for such a time as this. We want to continue to let you know that we believe in the power of prayer. Prayer changes absolutely everything. So if you or anyone you know who is standing in the need of prayer, we want you to put those names in the comments. We always get those names and we put them on our prayer list and we pray over these names daily. And my faith connects to your faith and whatever it is, whatever it is that you need from God, whatever it is that you're standing for, whatever it is that you may be waiting on God for, we believe that all things are possible to those that believe. Do you still believe? If you believe, I want you to type in the comments, yes, I'm a believer. Go ahead and identify yourself. Identify yourself that I am a believer. And I'm believing by faith that if you can identify yourself even now, God has a blessing with your name on it. Yes, I am a believer. It is our humble prayer that God will do just what he said 
he would do. I'm fully persuaded that God is able to do exceeding. He can do anything beyond what we can even imagine according to the power that worketh in us. Do you believe that? Yes, I am a believer. I want to encourage you tonight. I want to encourage you tonight because I believe that many of us are believing God for some things and just maybe, just maybe, you are in his waiting room. I want to get that in your mind right now. I want you to think about this. I want you to picture yourself that you are in the waiting room of God. The Bible lets us know, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Bible says, cast thou burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. The Bible says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And I want to talk tonight about what happens in the waiting room. Why? Because I'm in this waiting room and prayers have gone up. Can I get a witness? You've prayed over it. Prayers have gone up. Tears have been shed. Hearts have been heavy. And from a human standpoint, the answer seemed to be taken forever. But God is faithful. Glory be to God. I want you to type that in all capital letters. God is faithful. Exclamation point. God is. He is faithful. Hallelujah. And he is giving us what we need in his own time. And so many times our timetable is different from God's timetable. And so when we're waiting on the answer, I, I want to share with you a few things, a few lessons that we can learn from the waiting room. So the first thing that we learn from the waiting room, I want you to type this point number one, everything has an order. Everything, everything has an order. So consider this, consider that when you walk into the waiting room, you're going to your appointment, what do we do? We walk in and many times we, we sign a, a clipboard or or if your waiting room is up to date, you, you tap into the computer um, that's on the desk. Watch this. So after I sign or after I put my name on the computer, I, I take a seat and I wait. Hmm. And, and while it may be frustrating to see so many other names that are on that list ahead of yours, I want us to understand that this is the moment where you take comfort in the fact that no name on that list will be ignored. Glory be to God. Somebody should have been shouting right through there. No name on the list is going to be ignored and every need will be addressed in the proper order. So you may not like this order, but unlike the earthly appointment, the order here is perfect. The next thing I want to tell you is keep an open mind. Would you type that for me, please? God bless you, Deacon Manfred. God bless you, Sokol. Keep an open mind. So our prayers are usually driven by our personal agendas. Let me say that again. I need you to have an open mind because our prayers are usually driven by our own personal agenda. And many times our very limited and often deluded um, understanding of what is actually best for us. So you got to spend time waiting in prayer. Hallelujah. You got to spend time waiting in prayer rather than worrying. I want you to type that for me, please. Spend time waiting in prayer rather than than worrying. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. and, and God will. He will. When you spend time in prayer, he will gradually bring our desires into alignment with his will. 
And that's one of the things that sometimes we fight against. He has to bring our desires in alignment with his will. And so the more time that we spend in God's presence, the more our requests will resemble God's intentions. And that is always a good thing. Amen. Because God's way is the best way for you and I. And so God's will is what I want for my life. I would dare not speak for you, but I'm telling you what I have learned, that God's will, God's will is what I want for my life. So the third thing I want to tell you is that while you're in God's waiting room, number three, you got to relax. I want everybody to type relax in all capital letters, exclamation point. You got to relax. You, you got to at least try. <laughs> you you got to relax. Why am I relaxing? Because I don't need to be ashamed or annoyed or insulted that God has asked me to wait. So we realize, yes, that delays are not denial. I want you to type that for me, please. All capital letters. Delay is not denial. And somebody watching me right now, you needed to hear what I just said. Delay is not denial. God bless you. Brother Rashawn, God bless you, Missionary Hill. So delay is not denial, but what it is, what is it? It is an invitation to get to know God better. So even right now, as you relax in the waiting room of God, you're getting the opportunity to know him better. So get comfortable, get comfortable in this waiting room because the Bible lets me even see that in this waiting room that there is music that is playing over your head. Zephaniah 3 and 17 says, He will rejoice over you with singing. Glory be to God. I said it's music playing in this waiting room. Relax. There is a water cooler in this waiting room. Psalms 23 and 2 says, He leads me beside the steel waters. Yeah, just, just, just relax in God's waiting room. There is some good reading material on the desk. Psalms 119 and 11 says, Your word have I hidden in my heart. And listen, that the seat that you're sitting in in God's waiting room is a comfortable seat in the refuge of his wings. Because Psalms 17 and 8 says, Hide me under the shadow of your wings. So if I can tell you anything tonight, just relax. I need everybody to type that in all capital letters, exclamation point, just relax, just relax. The next thing I wanna tell you is that your name will be called when you least expect it. That's point number four. I want you to type that for me, please. Your name will be called when you least expect it. Get ready for your name to get called. Hallelujah. In this waiting room, your name is going to get called when you least inspect it. So instead of just waiting for a specific answer you've requested, I want you to ask God to make you sensitive to his voice in your situation. Lord, I want to be sensitive to your voice. I need you to type that for me in faith. I want you to type that in faith. Lord, I want to be sensitive to your voice. Lord, I want to hear your voice, your voice, your voice, your voice, because the picture is always bigger from God's perspective. And he may want to teach us some things that we have never expected to learn. And more than that, while we are in the midst of our need, just maybe, just maybe God may use you to meet the needs of somebody else. And when we understand that there are times when we are used, even in our waiting season, to meet the need of somebody else, it's a blessing that gives you purpose to your pain. Let me say it again. There's a blessing in that that gives purpose to your pain. So listen for your name to be called. The next thing I want to tell you is that you will always get 
what you need. Point number five. I want everybody to type that, please. You will always get what you need. God bless you, Sister Luella. God bless you, Sister Kamala. You will always get what you need. Deacon Matthew, you're going to always get what you need. Why, preacher? Because God will never set you up for failure. I want y'all to type that, please. I want you to type that by faith. God will never set you up for failure. Never. He'll never do it. And he never allows a need in your life that doesn't fully intend to be met. God is going to meet your need. Hallelujah. If you're in God's waiting room right now, I want you to type in all capital letters, God will meet my need. That is faith talking. Come on. God will meet my need. Wherever you watching me from speaking to your own device in your atmosphere, God will meet my need. Hallelujah. So to even prove that he often meets one need with many blessings and overflow, and he leaves us not only satisfied, but saturated in his goodness. That's a good place to be. I'm not only satisfied, but I am saturated in his goodness. Anybody ready for that? I'm saying right now, God is getting ready to meet your need. He's going to satisfy that and saturate you with some goodness. The next thing I want to tell you is that you will never have to wait alone. Point number six. Would you type that, please? You'll never have to wait alone. God bless you, Brother Jeremy. You'll never have to wait alone. Yes, y'all keep those hearts coming. You'll never have to wait alone. God is for you and God is with you. I need you to type that by faith. God is for me and God is with me. Come on, say it out loud. God is for me and God is with me. Come on, Brother Shaniel. God is for me and God is with me. Come on, Sister Melinda. God is for me and God is with me. Come on, Sister Tania. God is for me and God is is with me. Come on, Sister Annette. God is for me and God is with me. Come on, Sister Joyce. God is for me and God is with me because he loves you. I'm talking to you. He loves you beyond your comprehension and he is in that waiting room with you. Thank you, Jesus. He's right there with you. He's holding your hand and whispering some comforting words and encouraging words to you while you're waiting on his perfect timing. Glory be to God. He's for you and he is with you right now. So as we close on tonight, if, if you are in God's waiting room right now, let me tell you, as the preacher, as the man of God, as your pastor, my heart goes out to you right now. But please know that you are in good company. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. Please know that you are in good company. There's some good conversation going on in this waiting room. Make no mistake about it. God's waiting room and, and his throne room are one and the same. And whatever your need, whatever your need, if you have already lifted it up in prayer, then it is in the hands of God. Hallelujah. If you've already turned it over to Jesus, it's in his hand and he is working it out. So trust his power and trust his plan and trust his timing. Trust his power and trust his plan. I want y'all to type that for me, please. Trust his power and trust his plan. Come on, Sister Cole. Trust his power and trust his plan. And you got to trust in God's timing. And most of all, trust the heart of God. He loves you more than we can even talk about right now. So instead of asking God to end the wait, we got to ask God, what is he accomplishing in me? 
What is God accomplishing in you and through you while we're waiting on what we're waiting on God for? And so know that once his desires for you and I have been accomplished, the wait will be over. Hallelujah. So just hold on. Hold fast. Hallelujah. Be steadfast and be unmovable, always abounding in the, the word of the Lord. I'm telling you, hold on. Hold on. Something is coming down the line for you. God has a special delivery that is on the way for you. Hallelujah. Your name, can you hear it? Can you hear it? Your name is, is getting ready to be called. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but if you're next in line, it means that the line is moving. And I'm going to be excited for what God is doing for you because I know if he's doing it for you, it means that miracles are still happening and I got to be next in line. Let us pray. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, oh God, help us even now. Help us to wait with hope and with eager expectation, knowing that you are always with us. Thank you, Jesus, and working our situation out for the good. God, give us eyes to see what you are already doing in our lives. And we pray, we pray even now for a heavenly perspective on our situations right now. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen and thank God. Listen, if you are in that waiting room, I'm telling you what I hear in the spirit, your name is getting ready to be called when you least expect it. And God has everything that you need. He's going to give you answer prayer and, and some more. Hallelujah. We want to invite you to join us on this platform on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And we'd love to see your face in the place. 5474 Memorial Drive. We want you to come out and, and worship the Lord with us. This is the Psalm 150 Church. We believe wholeheartedly that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So if you got breath in your body, you ought to have a praise. I got a right and I got a reason to praise the Lord. And I'm telling you, if you come over here, we praise God on purpose because he has done great things in our lives. Listen, we would love for you to join us for any one of our worship experience. We thank you for being with us tonight at 630 in our online Bible. So you still got time to get here for our in-person Bible conversation. We have a good time in the Lord in person on Wednesday night. We'd love you to come and be a part of that. But listen, continue to pray for us. And just in case you hadn't heard it today, we love you and we need you to survive. Prayer, prayer, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Hallelujah. Prayer has the answer to everything. Hallelujah. So we thank you again for your support. We thank you for encouraging words. We thank you for all of your prayers. Hallelujah. That never goes without saying that. We thank you so much for whatever it is that you're doing to help us in this part of the vineyard. But until the next time, I want to tell you this. It's no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He will surely do the same for you. Have faith in God. And listen, please be safe and be sensible. It's unusually hot, so stay hydrated and, and make sure you're doing the necessary things to stay safe in times like this. But until the next appointed time, it is our humble prayer that the glory of the Lord be revealed in you. In Jesus' name, amen.